Hello everyone, my name is Bulko and today I wanted to talk to you about the Bard in Dark and Darker. So now that early access has been unleashed upon us, we have so many new tools in the toolkit for the Bard. So let's talk a little bit about that and this is going to be a bit of a class overview and build guide to help you get started in playing Bard effectively. This isn't necessarily going to be designed to be this is the way you need to play it, but it's just going to go over all the different things you can do because you have a lot of options and then you can build whatever suits your play style best and sort of where you're at and whether you're playing solo or with a group. If you're trying to go for more loot or go for more PVP, whatever you want to do, this will hopefully give you some ideas to how to build a bard effectively because there's a lot of things you can do and it's a really, really fun class. So right away, let's dive into the perks and skills and this is Typically what I'm running as a very general setup here. So first up, you'll notice that in terms of the actual skills, I'm taking double music memory. This is pretty well mandatory. Currently, dissonance just isn't really worth it. And encore isn't really required. And in fact, as the bard is designed right now, playing to the end without mistakes, while is fine, is actually suboptimal if you're running the charismatic performance perk. So there's this mechanic when you're playing your music as a bard that if as long as you're good enough, you can get, you know, the first half to three quarters of the song right and then just mash your keyboard and you'll blip through the last bit of the song and this will upgrade to a perfect performance just fine. So encore isn't really needed. And if you're not running this, you probably just with a little bit of practice are going to be able to perfect your songs anyways. So we're not too worried there. But in terms of all the perks, let's talk about everything that you need. And for me, first up, I think superior dexterity is arguably the most important or most fun perk for me when I'm playing a bard. It gives you that 50% faster switching time between weapons and utility items. And the way bard instruments work now is they are utility items. And you're often going to have, you know, two, at least three instruments in your utility slots at all time and being able to quickly swap between them and then quickly pull out the song you need and doing that all really fluidly is going to be really important so that you can maintain all the various buffs and a good bard is going to be maintaining two to four buffs at all times. So this is something that's going to be really, really important. And then being able to quickly swap when people are attacking you to pull out your weapon and defend yourself. This just helps with that. It helps you, you know, switch to, switch to a potion. It helps you switch to throwing knives or Francisca axes. And yes, bards can use throwing weapons. They are absolutely starved for utility slots. So being able to swap around quickly is really important. And I love superior dexterity. Next up, we have Warsong. So Warsong is one that I like. It gives you this nice attack power buff for six seconds whenever you finish a song. Obviously, this is better in group play when you're not just giving it to yourself, but all your allies as well. It's notable that this is base weapon damage, which means all your other modifiers like your physical power bonus and headshot multipliers are all going to increase this. And this can actually lead to some significant damage. Um, it is only for six seconds, so you might have other things you want to do instead of Warsong, but it is one that I like and I think it's useful for, for the playstyle I like. Rapier Mastery is something that I'm also currently using and this kind of pairs nicely because the rapier attacks fast so you can take advantage of this Warsong. And Warsong also is going to work better, at least I feel it works really well, with classes like Rogues or like Rangers lining up their triple shot and when you're really taking advantage of that bonus damage. Rapier Mastery is once again another 3 flat damage, so between the two you're adding 6 flat damage to a rapier which has a nice range and decent attack speed. And then you just get a bonus fun uh, five action speed on top of that, which is going to increase its action speed. So this is going to affect both attacking as well as interaction. And now that magical and uh, regular interaction speed are, is in the game, um, bards are actually the best. They open up chests really quickly, doors really quickly. They open up portals quickly. They get shrines quickly. They res quickly. They just do it all really quickly. So and it's just an, another little bonus you can have. And then I already talked about charismatic performance. So this is kind of like an all rounder build that I like. Obviously, if you don't have a rapier, you just drop rapier mastery. Um, there's lots of great weapons for the bard and we'll talk about that in just a moment. 
But in terms of other perks that you can consider, so dancing feet gives you that increased movement speed while holding an instrument. It's nice just helping you stay caught up with your party or with certain songs you might want to be dancing around and kiting enemies while you're playing an AOE debuff. So this can absolutely be useful if you're doing that. Jolly tune, uh, or jolly time rather, um, makes it so ales become sort of like mini potions and the cheap ales are actually... Um, you know, really effective HP. So if you are really, really strapped for cash, you could um, bring a few ales in and use these as like cheap healing potions. Um, I haven't really used this. I don't love the drunk effect. It does give you the extra movement speed and bards already have a ton of movement speed from other places. So drunk bard could be kind of a fun, like run around the dungeon super fast kind of thing. And obviously you do get the buff from, from being drunk anyways. Lore Mastery just gives you that interaction speed of all types by 25%, so just making you even faster at opening things. This can be pretty nice if you're going for like lots of looting and, and running away and kiting. Um, it, it is nice. I find when I'm playing with groups, because I'm constantly maintaining buffs though, I'm not the one opening doors anyway. Um, obviously, this you are a great class to open doors, but I'm oftentimes playing my, uh, my buffing songs while my allies are opening the door. Melodic Protection is okay, gives you that 15 physical damage reduction bonus while you're playing, uh, makes you a little bit more tankier, so depending on the bard you're going for, if you are going for a more like pure mu musician that's always playing music, there are damaging songs, um, for example, that this would just let you be that little bit tankier and have better exchanges against like rangers and things in the poke. Um, and you know, if you're getting run down, probably not going to save you in the long run, but there's bards can become relatively tanky with some of their buffs. Reinforced instruments, 50% uh, increased weapon damage when attacking with a musical instrument. You turn your ha your drums into freaking missiles. The speed of your drum is so fast when you throw it. So getting an extra 50% more damage, plus some of the self buffs you have, you can actually nuke people with drums. It's probably not optimal, but it is really, really fun. And then obviously you can just go loot smashing. Um, if you want to just focus on having a really good instrument um, and attacking with it, obviously you can do that. And it seems really fun. Doesn't necessarily seem ideal, but I'm sure there's bards out there doing it. That's going to be great. Storyteller is if you are running with a wizard and a cleric, I would say this could be potentially worth it. Plus three will and knowledge. And then on top of running the plus three all stats, you're unlocking the potential for uh, clerics and wizards to be running some hilarious double spell kits as well. Um, and you're being going to get some some crazy value out of that. And bards obviously already pair really, really well with casters because of a song we're going to talk about. And then Wanderer's Luck is another one. I like to run this a lot and sometimes I'll swap this out for uh, Rapier Mastery um, or Charismatic Performance even. And this just means you're going to find higher quality uh, items when opening treasure chests. So it just gives you a little bit more loot and it's totally worth taking in my opinion. So in terms of the music, there are so many songs now. So you can see I'm running 10 songs and there are still nine more I could take. So tons of options, tons of variety here. And let's talk about my strategy for just setting this up. So first off on my queue, I'm using all the drum skills. And so what I've organized these uh, two music sheet sets by is by instrument. So I have all my drums on the queue, and then I also move my drum to the first slot on the three. And then I have my lyre on the E, and I use my four in my first slot is typically my lyre. So I have it like set up so I can press four and then E or three and then Q. And then it makes it really, really fast so I can quickly swap between my songs really fluidly because you need to be able to have really high APM to play a bard effectively. <clears throat> you're constantly swapping back and forth. Um, and if if it's, you're a little bit tedious with the menus, like maybe maybe bard isn't for you. But if you love that kind of hectic gameplay, um, bard is really fun. So. First of all, let's talk about the drums. I'm taking all the drum songs and I did this particular mix for me because I wanted to drop one instrument. Obviously, I'm not taking any lute songs and there are some very, very good lute songs, but um, I, I wanted to free up my utility slots because this is already taking up three utility slots, which means I only have three for potions. Um, and bandages and throwing weapons and things like that. So those get filled up really fast. And 
um, it's really good to, to have important things ready to go in your utility slots. So I, I kind of dropped the loot and I found that these songs are also all very good. So let's, like I said, talk about the drums. First up, we have Beats of Alacrity. So this is 25 movement speed for two minutes when you play it properly, which is huge. So I have 281 move speed and I'm in a very slow set of gear right now. I'm wearing a Regal Gambeson and a lot of heavy stuff. I'm going for like a more a tankier build. So this will get me actually over that 300 move speed base um, just as a baseline. And on top of that, once I start factoring in my all stat buff, um, I'm even getting even higher and then I can put in a Celerando and then I can get that even higher. And then at that point, once you have a Celerando fully buffed, nobody's catching you. Um, obviously you have to stop and play music, but if you are kind of well prepared and always maintaining beats of alacrity, even with beats of alacrity, you put your weapon away. Most classes won't catch you and you're pretty well even with a rogue. Um, until this buff runs out. So if, as long as you're maintaining this buff, you're really hard to catch as a bard. And at the end of the day, you have enough strength and physical power that you're not really worried about rogues catching you because you're just going to two shot them. So uh, let's talk about how that works in a little bit too. Um, obviously, Rousing Rhythms is a really powerful drum buff. It's that plus three to all stats. This one also affects your allies. So the speed buff is just for you. This is for allies. You have Din of Darkness. So this does magical damage to all enemies in an area around you that has a really large area. And if you play it perfectly, it's gonna do five damage per tick as a base for eight seconds. It does, you know, 40 damage. That's pretty good. Um, and the fact is this goes through walls and this is a perfect for clearing out rooms of small enemies. So rooms that are filled with spider mummies, you can just kill them all in a couple of ticks. You can kill all the, the skull bats in the pyramid room. There's a few enemies that are annoying to get to. You know, if there's an archer that you kind of kited to a corner, um, you instead of just having to dodge and shoot, you could just play this a couple times and, and kill them. Um, it's also great in PvP if you're in that back line and you've cast all your buff spells um, or all your buff songs, you throw on Din of Darkness as your tank is like holding them in a doorway and you're still ticking away at their health while while your tank is is, you know, doing their thing. And this is really great if they're, you have a group of enemies like pinched in a corridor and you can kind of hold them at the door, especially if like the zone's coming in, for example. And there's been quite a few fights I've won just because the enemy um, was just taking constant free damage and they just weren't able to push through the body block or like get through the door. Um, or they, you know, were forced to make a bad play and rush in and into a room where we just ambushed them. So yeah, I love Din of Darkness. It's fantastic. Celerando is obviously amazing. This was um, used to be a loot song back when Bards only had the loot. It's an AOE speed buff that uh, ramps up really fast. And this is amazing for getting your fighters and barbarians just running people down. They combine this with their own speed buffs and it's fantastic. Allegro is a really powerful action speed and spell casting speed buff. So your wizards and clerics are going to love you with this one. It also increases your attack speed as well as your ability to uh, interact with things. So this is fun. A lot of times you can open up your buff chain by playing Allegro first and then you play a couple of your buffs. It doesn't last a ton of time though. So you kind of are often picking between using Allegro or a Celerando at the start of a fight. It's going to be sometimes hard to get both and like maintain them for a reasonable amount of time. And then moving on to the lyre, so there's a few things we can talk about. Um, Song of Shadow is interesting. I don't always run it, but if I'm not running with a cleric or a wizard, I will run it just because I have the space for it. Um, but this is sort of like a flex spot. This turns you invisible for 35 seconds. You and all nearby enemies or allies, rather. Um, obviously, you cannot move if you break it pops your invisibility to like how all other invisibilities work from like the potions or the base rogue invisibility, for example, works that way. Um, it, the one thing is 35 seconds is a long time, but as a bard sitting in ambush is not always great because you need to be play, playing all your maintenance buffs. So if you're trying to maintain all your buffs, um, 
and you're just sitting in a shadow it's 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 not great but this is fantastic if you're in a three man and you play this and you have your big beefy barbarian invisible in the middle of the room and then you're just dancing around the room playing all your music looking like a free kill and then somebody rushes you and then the barb just pops out of the middle of nowhere and you know felling axe to the face that's a really fun combo um otherwise there's some really good maintenance buffs from the liar as well and ballad of courage is near the top of the list so we have 30 physical power bonus this is a personal buff this is a lot of physical power for two minutes it kind of your beast beats of alacrity and then ballad of courage are sort of your two personal uh maintenance buffs that you keep on all the time and then you also have an aoe maintenance buff that is fantastic so harmonic shield is 50 armor and magic resist which is an insane amount of armor and magic resist for two minutes for your whole team this definitely gets everybody in your party over the threshold of being hurt really badly and if you have the more armor you have in dark and darker like almost the more effective it is so harmonic shield can push your fighters and your clerics and even like a bard like like what i'm wearing i'm already up to 17 going up to 130 armor I, I become fairly tanky um, and I, I've actually been able to, you know, solo 1v1, um, you know, equally geared barbarians with a couple of good blocks and parries just by being able to, you know, survive a hit um, or two. And that's all thanks to Harmonic Shield. Um, tranquility is your sort of bread and butter sustain. This is one of the best parts about having a bard. It gives you 24 hit points over 12 seconds. It only is going to give you back recoverable HP, but it means your, your party isn't wasting time like sitting on the floor and you're just continually looting up after fights and it helps you be maintained ready to go. You're popping like one potion, maybe a bandage, and then tranquility is doing the rest of the work. It, it tops you up amazingly well. And then uh, Coracle of Clarity, this is why wizards and, and uh, clerics want you around. This is essentially like an infinite amount of regeneration for spells. It's constantly going to be recharging their spells just as they're doing regular things. If they really want to get lots of spells back, they can also be meditating or sitting down while you're using this on them. And, um, you know, they get lots of spells back. And then my final pickup, which I always recommend taking, is Unchained Harmony. So you open all nearby locked doors and containers. This is amazing for a few reasons. One, it's, you know, one fifth of a skill and you have infinite lock picks. Seems pretty good. Does take a little bit of time and it is noisy, so it's not like 100% better than lock picking, but it's very good. And the other thing is it opens up everything in the radius. So you can immediately tell if a chest is a mimic or not because when you play this and a chest does not open it's a mimic you can just leave it alone if you want um that's a really fun use and yeah it even just like can save time in some of those packed rooms like that four square room that has a whole bunch of chests really tightly close together you can open up four chests at once with this um and you know if you're running with like a cleric or somebody who's really sucks at interacting uh this is going to help them grab a couple chests without wasting all their time now, in terms of the things I don't run, let's talk about those. They are still very good, um, at least some of them. So Shriek of Weakness, this lowers physical power bonus by two, four, and five, not a ton. So you notice like we get 30 physical power for this, or the debuff is gonna be five physical power. So not, not super powerful. However, armor rating by 60, that is a lot. 60 armor rating if you're playing against like you're you're all, all almost putting like a, a low geared person into getting extra damage received um so there's potential here and even against like moderately geared people then you know this is a way to like crush uh their their physical damage reduction so there is some opportunities here in some builds you could run something like this um piercing shrill does damage and causes like a little sound echo effect it does take a while to play. Um, it is kind of fun. It is just like a spammable ranged nuke. Um, it's it's okay. I, I've played around with it. I didn't find it to be amazing, but it's it's not terrible. It is physical damage though, which I mean, if you want to do physical damage at a range, just grab a crossbow, um, you know, or eat, heck, a survival bow will, will out damage this. So uh, I, I didn't love piercing shrill. And then Banshee's Howl reduces all stats by three for 20 seconds. Um, it doesn't work on boss or sub boss monsters. 
So like the wraiths or the ch skeletal champion and then like the lich and those kind of things. Um, I didn't find this to be impactful enough, so I don't I don't take the, the flute things. Now the loot is actually very good. Um, I just didn't want to have to bring another instrument and I found, felt I wasn't quite losing enough. So obviously the alacrity, so 15% action speed is very good. Um, and it could potentially be worth just, you know, doing something like this and just running instead of running this for your AOE alacrity, you're just going to be using this as sort of like your pre-combat AOE buff. And then, you know, having the selfish two minute action speed for yourself and then just carry the loot around. You might want to do something like that. If you don't mind having, um, the extra, extra instruments, uh, that, that could be uh, a strategy for you. Um, for uh, peacemaking, that's kind of a fun one, depending on your comp. Like if you're running cleric wizard, peacemaking could be one of those things where you play it like as your wizard blows down the door, as they come through the door and their barbarian and fighter are kind of just like looking at you while you just dance in their face and your wizard and cleric are just blowing them up with like judgment and fireballs. Um, so it just stops melee attacks from happening or even just any attacks from happening left clicks within the zone. Uh, so if your allies are out of the zone or positioned in such a way um, that they can still attack, this is, this can be pretty fun. It's obviously really great for cheesing uh, PVE as well. You can just do this and stand next to a boss while your ranger picks them off. Um, there's some, there's some use cases for this. Absolutely. But uh, you know, there's other things you, you, you don't necessarily need it. Lament of Langer. So this is reducing movement speed by 20 in an AOE. It's only six seconds though. So I don't find this to be super impactful and 20 is like an okay amount, but it's, it's like, it's going to be, it, it might help you catch up. But at the end of the day, if you just play a Celerando, um, this is probably going to be more effective in terms of the differentiate differential in movement. Uh, chaotic discord is great if you're soloing like goblin caves for example um you just make all that the the mobs kill each other or if you're soloing even like the ruins um so that that's kind of fun um but generally speaking there's also other things you could probably be doing like if you're running in with a group you probably just could be playing din of darkness and just be doing big aoe damage to a whole room if there's enough enemies for this to be worth it uh and i find in hell, maybe there's opportunities for getting them mobs to kill each other. Um, but uh, it's not like, once again, I didn't feel like it's mandatory. The, the, the main thing I feel like I'm missing out from the loot is the Aria of Alacrity. Um, Chaotic Discord is very good in PvE and can have some fun situations. Um, the Lament of Langer, I don't feel too bad about missing out on. Peacemaking has some potential. and I don't feel too bad about Song of Silence interrupting enemy spells. Um, that prevent the caster from casting magic for six seconds. I mean, you could make a wizard really sad, but um, other than that, uh, I think the loot is, if you are going to drop one instrument, to me, the loot is really easy. Arguably, you could also just do something like this and drop the flute. And if you have like a rogue or somebody else who wants to pick up the, the locks, you could do this as well. And that would, that would probably be fine. Um, Cause 15, uh, 15 action speed is a lot. That is a lot of action speed. So it is, it is a sacrifice that, that I am making. Now let's talk about the gear a little bit. Um, I, I am a little bit of a weapon hoarder cause I find that that's the easiest thing to jump back in with. Um, and you, you see, there's a theme uh, in, in what I'm going here. So typically, like I mentioned, I keep my drum and my lyre on my three and my four just ready to go. Um, I am using crossbows right now. I don't always use cross uh, the hand crossbow. I, um, sometimes I do, and sometimes I will only have like one hand crossbow set, and then I'll have like a um, like I might just bring like a, a rapier hand crossbow as like a crappy set, and then I'll have like my my better rapier with a buckler. And that is something that I think is not to be over, uh, understated is the fact that you can have a buckler as a bard. Um, I really, really like being the, just having that ability to block. Uh, bards have this secret hidden buff of everybody wants to kill you because you're a bard. So being able to just pull that shield up and block those attacks 
so that your allies can kind of get in there and save you a little bit can be great otherwise yeah the the double crossbow just lets you poke away at range and bards have a nice base starting stat so i am wearing like some plus agility right now so i have a couple of plus agility pieces but otherwise you have 14 strength uh, typically it's 14 agility and then the low will here and then 20 and 20 knowledge and resourcefulness so not too bad for stats and the 14 strength means it doesn't take much and mostly just you pop your own self buff and then the 30 physical tap power bonus and a bard actually um kind of like base level bard actually does more damage than a fighter so um obviously if you're also with a fighter you're increasing it even further but you know with a decent rapier with your own self buffs up you're often hitting pretty hard on the dummies um you know in the 40s right away without and like this is not great gear you know it's just like grays and greens they have like one random blue that's not doing much for me just a little bit of armor um and uh yeah you're you're able to take down people surprisingly well so the bard in terms of the role they're playing in their parties obviously maintaining all those buffs and then after the, providing those buffs, um, they they have that obviously that like healing and sustain and support role, but they are a bit of a skirmisher as well, and they are sort of that ranged character, especially now that you don't have to worry about having um, a musical instrument in your second slot here. You can actually just throw a crossbow or even a couple survival bows. I like to keep nice survival bows around, and um, you can take people out at range. So yeah. That is my little overview of the Bard in Dark and Darker. I am super happy with all the additions they've made. I think the Bard is in a fantastic place and I'm really looking forward to seeing where they're taking this game. So let me know in the comments below if you have any uh, feedback or comments or suggestions. Definitely give me a thumbs up or just say hi. It all helps the algorithm so much and I will catch you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.